Hey guys, it's Monday, August 2nd, 2021, and I've got an update for you. Um, not a layout update. Uh, I haven't done anything on the layout for quite a while. Haven't done an update for quite a while. And I'll just haven't really done anything out there. I've been too busy. Uh, summers around here are crazy, and I'm in the middle of a huge project of painting my house and other things. And so the layout hasn't really been much of a priority right now. I haven't even been out there running trains too much. Um, if I do it, uh, anything more out there, I'll, I'll do another update on that. But I do have an update. Um, this is a little different. Um, kind of going to start out with a story. Um, as a lot of you know, I, I sold my my rod on train, uh, my my uh, 1241, the, the, the blue and yellow Santa Fe. It went to um, a park up in Skykomish, Washington, and I'd never heard of it. And the reason why probably is because the town only has 200 people. And the president of the club saw, saw mine up for sale and their, their train up there pretty much took a dump and they pull the public every, uh, every weekend. And Kevin um, is the president of the club. It's, it's called the, uh, uh, Great Northern and Cascade Railway, and they he started it about 2016 um, to gain revenue for the town, um, and that's that's where the money goes to help build the park and and, and the town and bring big, bring tourists in. Beautiful area, it's very very you know and like I said I'd never heard of it, but anyway. Um, I met Kevin up in Portland uh, with my train on Wednesday, gave it to him, took the money, and I, I got a good lifelong friend with Kevin. Kevin's an awesome individual, um, and uh, he's devoted to uh, making that park work. So, so my train's going to be the featured runner every weekend up in, in Washington. So that's, that's really cool. I'm, ha I'm happy that it went to a, a nice home. So that, that door closed and another one is opening up and that's what this update's about. And I've got to start off with a, with a story and it's kind of, kind of a long one, but, um, I've had a, uh, a wonderful friend that I met 10 years ago, uh, through a mutual friend, um, that they both worked with. I'm, um, I've known Russ for quite quite a while now he's uh he's married to a very good friend of my wife and we get together you know as frequently as we can we play cards and listen to music and and have a good a good time and i i'd known russ for probably, probably at least five years when we we're we we're sitting at the table playing cards and and you know he said you know i got a guy i work with that uh he likes trains and i know you like trains and I, I, I should introduce you to him. Um, and I went, really, that's kind of cool. And he said, yeah, he, uh, he, built a, he built a train. And, you know, I'm like, okay, he built a train. You know, the cards stop and the two wives start talking. And I said, you know, what do you mean he built a train? And he goes, yeah, he built a steam engine, I think. And I went, what? And so, yeah, he said, yeah, um, it's... Uh, you, you can you can ride on it and it's it's over at the park in Medford and I went whoa it's so it's inch and a half scale live steam and you know I it's and so anyway long story short is you know Russ took me over to meet John and uh, we instantly hit it off John John was a, a interesting uh, individual and uh, that's about all I you know I love John uh, he became one of my best friends. I was over the, over at his house, um, oh, several times a week. I'd go over there and I'd just BS with him. We'd talk trains. I'd, I'd bang on his door and he said, hey, come on in. You know, we'd come in, we'd talk trains and, and drink some Miller and, um, but, uh, yeah, he, uh, you know, he, he was telling me what, what, what he did is he, uh, he built an Allen 10-wheeler, um, he took you know, and he took me down to the park and and showed it to me and it was gorgeous i mean it, it's one of it was one of the one of the most beautiful uh engines i had seen um he uh 
put a lot of a lot of uh, brass details on it. And uh, John, if, if anybody that knows John, being a machinist that he is, um, very meticulous in anything he did. It it had to be perfect or near perfect, or he wasn't happy with it. Um, he, uh, you know, and, and it's funny, I'm a woodworker and he's a machinist and he would always, any, any measurements that he would give, they were always in thousands, ten thousands, whatever, uh, you know, of an inch. And I, you know, it's like, John, give me a number. I, I you know, I'm a woodworker, you know, give me a 32nd eighth quarter half, you know, give me something I can understand it. And we, we, you know, we, we go over there. We, we had so much in common. We talk airplanes, we talk trains, we talk trucks. John used to be, um, a, uh, a biker and he's, he was 135 pounds soaking wet. And he used to have this big Fu Manchu mustache, beard, long hair, rode a 500 pound Harley, big chopper with, with ape hangers. And I just could never picture John on that. <laughs> but man, he had so many stories he'd tell me. And uh, it, was, it, it was just great, great fun. And uh, he taught me, um, I ran his, his, uh, his 10 wheeler over to park for several years. And, uh, he taught me everything he knew about life steam, building that one, running it. And what he didn't know, he made up, but no, he, he knew, he knew everything. Um, guy was, guy was sharp, really sharp. And he used to be a, uh, a logger. And I can't picture John being a logger, but he was a logger up in Scotia, Northern California. He, uh, he logged redwoods. He used to log these big old giant, old growth, massive redwood trees. And uh, he lived over there for, oh gosh, I think it was like 30 years, 20 years or something. But after he uh, quit logging, he, uh, he taught machining at the, uh, the local... I think it was a JC or whatever. Anyway, over in Scotia and he, he was their machining instructor. And that's where he met Russ. Russ was, I think, I think Russ was like 19 or 20 when, when he met, met John and they were such good friends that uh, Russ, Russ called John dad. I mean, they were just, I mean, they were like this. And so anyway, Russ, Russ did his thing and went to school and ultimately uh, went to work for Ericsson Air Crane here in Central Point, Oregon. That's their main headquarters where they uh, build and rebuild those big giant heavy lift, massive helicopters, beautiful machine. I've, I've taken a tour out there and uh, seen behind the scenes of it and it's just, it's, it's incredible. Uh, the, the, uh, the quality of work that they do in the machining of, and building those helicopters. But anyway, Russ, Russ was out there and uh, John was uh, moving from Scotia to, uh, to Grants Pass and Russ got him on as a machinist over in Ericsson. So they, they did that for a while. And John and I became very good friends. Um, and he uh, he started about three three years ago. Well, no, it's not longer than that because he passed away three years ago. Um, but yeah, about probably two years before that, he started getting getting sick. Um, he had lung ultimately lung cancer, mouth cancer, and, and he fought it for quite a while. Um, but he passed away three years ago. Um, and anyway. Uh, I lost my train of thoughts. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, he, uh, well, anyway, John got, John got sick, passed away. And, uh, he, you know, in the meantime, before that, he, he kind of, he kind of quit going down to the train park and, and, you know, I, we, we didn't run his engine anymore. And, uh, I would go down, um, to the park with, uh, with my grandkids with, with kids when they came up here or whatnot that that's that's where the switcher came from john had had that in the car barn um 
along with his, uh, his steam locomotive. But the, the steaming bay was a distance from the car barn, so he used the switcher to, uh, to take the, um, the 10 wheeler, which was number 22, up to the steaming base. And so that, that was it. It went back and forth doing, you know, doing that duty. And that was pretty much it. So, um, when, when John was getting, he had to start liquidating stuff and his Alan, you know, he, he, he was going to sell it and he gave me first, uh, first choice. And the price that he was giving it to me was just a phenomenal, he, he was, selling it for basically the, the materials and stuff. It was worth probably twice what, what he was offering it for. Um, but I, there was just no way to, uh, for me to purchase that. You know, as much as I wanted to, it, I just wasn't gonna happen. So it, it went up for sale and went to, uh, to Texas. Um, the gentleman that bought it, it was kind of funny. Um, he, uh, He's an airline pilot. He's been with United for 33 years. Um, and he bought this thing sight unseen and took it to, uh, to Texas. And I was on vacation in, in, uh, in Oregon. And I, when this all happened, I was, I didn't get a chance to meet him when he came and picked up the 22. Um, but he didn't know how to run it. And John was so sick at that point that he couldn't really do anything to uh to help david you know run that thing and i knew everything about it so i hooked up with him and via videos and, and things i uh i taught him how to run that and everything i knew about it to get him started and he, he one time he said i got a little piece of track set up in my in my garage and it's like oh that's pretty cool and so he sets up the video so I could hook him up. His garage was a four stall airplane hangar. It, you know, his house is on an airport and out in front of these massive roll up doors, he's got this airplane out there that he's building. He's got one in the hangar that he flies. <laughs> and, uh, and this track, he, it was probably 50 yards, <laughs> something like that of track to go back and forth. And that was the track in his garage. Um, so anyway, he <laughs> it, it went to a good home. Uh, if I couldn't get it, it went to a good home. But if I backed the train up a little bit at John's house, every time I would, the first time I went over there, he was showing me around and he was into HO trains. He had a bunch of those and videos and we just, we had a great time when we were over there. But in his, you know, he said, oh, I got another train I want to show you. It's like, okay, cool. Um, and... He went in the be bedroom and there's this beautiful blue American that, uh, I mean, it was gorgeous and it didn't have a cab. And he was telling me, yeah, I, I did this and I, it's, it's probably 80% done. I've got everything to finish it and the cab and everything. It's like, wow, John, that is gorgeous. And, uh, he said, yeah, um, it, it I, I don't know if I'll ever run it. I don't know if I'll ever finish it. And I said, wow, well, when you do, it should be in a museum. <laughs> it's that pretty. He said, yeah, I'm, I was going to wood fire it. You know, I, I've even got, I even had the, <laughs> the little pieces of my drone all cut and split, ready, ready to fire this thing. Um, the, the, you know, the, uh, big smokestack for it. And, and, uh, a good friend that he, uh, he knew that uh, was also into steam. When John was showing him the locomotive and uh, guy said, yeah, John, it's pretty, but you know, you can't run it. You'll never be able to put a fire in it. And John, you know, being the meticulous, John, he, he just like, he's trying to think, well, what did I do wrong? I thought I had everything right. What did I, and, and he asked me, he said, w w why? And the guy said, it's too pretty. It's beautiful. You can't put a fire in it. <laughs> and it never did. And it's, it's made of uh, uh, 
it's all brass, stainless steel. The the pilot on the thing took John about six months to make. It's all old growth redwood that he logged over in Scotia. The wood for the cab, which has to be built, made out of the same old growth redwood. Um, it's it's uh, it's a piece of art. And uh, long story short is that locomotive. Uh, was taken by when John passed and they were liquidating things. Um, John left me the switcher in his estate. So that's how I came to, 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 uh, to be able to own that. Um, and so uh, his brother um, took the, uh, the American down to California with the uh, plan that he told John that uh, he was going to finish it and it, it was gonna stay in the family. And uh, anyway, uh, I was flipping through Facebook about a month and a half ago and was scrolling through it. And I see that, that engine roll through and it's like, whoa. And I looked at it and it was up for sale down at the uh, Sacramento Valley Live Steamers in, uh, in uh, Oh, it's not quite Sacramento, but it's pretty close. Um, and it's like, no way. Because it's like, this is not supposed to be sold. But uh, I won't get into that. But anyway, didn't want to. they didn't want to deal with it and uh, put it up for sale. And I saw that and it's like, oh, man. And it just broke my heart. It just broke. Because the... Uh, you know, John put his life into that thing. Um, the the covers on the steam chest are. It took him a year to make those. There's two of them on you know, one each side. Took him a year to get them because they had to be perfect. They are um, within two ten thousandths of an inch of being absolutely perfectly symmetrical with all the diagonal lines meeting to the corners. He said, that's those have to meet. And, and, and he did that. The, he had a custom uh, plate on the smoke box door, number 21. And it matched his uh, other one, the 22. And it said, it said on, on the plate, JT Felt Locomotive Works 21 on it and it's cast brass and uh and it's like whoa so i thought i i thought about it and it's like okay and long story short is i i threw the dice and put mine up for sale hoping to get the money to purchase the american and that happened and uh I've got that beautiful locomotive. I went down to uh, the Sacramento area um, on Saturday and picked it up. And that was an interesting day because uh, I blew my master cylinder on my truck and head gasket. <laughs> so, uh, so I got major issues with my truck, um, but that's another story. But uh, anyway, I've got that locomotive. I've got um, a lot of other stuff. I've got all the materials pretty much with the exception of a few things to finish it. And uh, including a uh, the, the trucks for a riding, well, not a riding car, but a fuel car because he was gonna wood fire this thing. And Train Mountain, you can't burn solid fuel. It's gotta be propane. So the thing has to be converted to propane. Um, which requires a burner um, in it and the propane tank to be able to carry it and the tender on a, an American is not very big. Um, it's not going to hold much water, much less propane. So I've got to have a uh, fuel car for it that's going to carry the propane. And I didn't know it, but he's he's got, because um, I was figuring I'm going to have to purchase trucks for that. And he's got... Um, the material to build two uh, arch bar trucks for the uh, fuel car, which is a huge savings. But of course, I'm going to have to add brakes to the fuel car and 
the tender because there's no engine brakes on this thing. So I've got to put a braking system on it. So that cost, there's some valves I've got to do. Um, but uh, there's a lot of work in it. And uh, my goal is, is to have it hopefully completed or at least running by the triennial next June. So that's my goal. Um, I don't know if I'll meet it because I want it done right. I'm not going to rush it. It's got to be done right. So uh, anyway, I'm going to shut the, the camera off and I'm going to show, show it to you, show, show you what else I've got to work with and kind of formulate my plan. Um, and uh, I'll uh, see you in a second. Okay, there it is, guys. Um, I'll try to hold this camera as still as I can. But uh, she's a beauty. I mean, she absolutely sparkles. And these are the valve covers for the steam chest that I was telling you about. I mean, like I, like I said, that, that thing is just meticulously machined. It had to be perfect. Absolutely had to be perfect. But all the, the valve gear, slides, Everything is uh, brass stainless steel. The uh, the wheels are stainless steel, which is unusual in the uh, steam hobby. But those were machined out of stainless steel. Um, so are the uh, the pilot trucks. The uh, the frame for the for the pilot is also stainless steel. Um, headlight i mean i'm not sure what else i can say except to, to show you um do have a a little peanut whistle on the top which is basically a very shrill sound but uh it looks cool and uh, yesterday i was i was on the phone with uh, tim parks and we were going over a plan to uh to finish this i was looking underneath and underneath the pilot right there is a six inch steam whistle that john put <laughs> oh my god um and the uh, builder's plate on the smoke box right here i mean it looks like it, it looks like a looks like a coin um but uh smoke smoke box in here this is uh we got the throttle right here. Um, this is a connection back here for the uh, for the blower, and this has got to be connected for that. So that's that's got to be done. Um, there's some piping and valving that's got to be uh, done before we can start the cab. Uh, most of it's in. You know, he's got the. Let me go over here. You know, he's got the water sight glass all all plumbed. Um, the red line is marking the. Uh, top of the crown sheet you know so you always have to keep the crown sheet you know covered with water so about a half a sight glass maybe you know is you know about where you want to keep your water um br you know brass and stainless steel smoke box door i don't you probably can't see the grates in there but this has got to be like i said converted to uh to propane um throttle um, the linkage has got to just run between the, uh, there's a, a clear tube that, uh, that linkage will go to the throttle valve in the smoke box. This piece of copper coming through here connects with the blower in the smoke box. That's also, also goes through a hollow tube through the boiler. So that will be hooked up to, uh, um, a valving up here this is called the turret this is where you get your steam for all the other valves um, you know it's going to need uh, a blower a whistle valve um, a valve for the uh, cylinder cocks uh, injectors you know to get water into the boiler um, you know that's all got to be done but most of it's you know here um, he's got brass plates for for the floor of the the cab the uh the wood um here let me 
bring it in here for a second. I was going to have these out, but I didn't. But this, this is the, uh, right here, the, uh, the box of wood, you know, redwood, um, to build the cab. And like I said, this is all old growth, redwood, 100 year old, same stuff that the pilot was made out of. Um, I've got all the uh, plans and blueprints to do this. And so it's just a matter of doing, I don't have to make it up. It's all, it's all there. And uh, get to listen to our neighbor's dogs barking. Uh, but he even made the uh, equalizers out of stainless steel. The only thing steel on this thing is the frame. And he had it powder coated, so uh, I don't know why he did blue. I, I you know, I, I, if he told me, I don't remember. But anyway, I'm gonna keep it blue. The the tender is also gonna be painted blue. Um, I'm going over here. It's too bad we have to listen to the dogs now. Um, but this is all the material for for the build, and it's 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 a lot of stuff. Um, I'll go. I'll start with over here. This is this is all the uh, stainless steel for the. Uh, for the tender, I should have had this all set up. You know, so this is all good. And this all has to be riveted together. Um, I was I was thinking welding, but no, <laughs> rivets. And this is uh, sheet. You got sheet brass for the top of the. And, and bottom, and there's also stainless steel plate in there to uh, to do to do that. And I have no idea what this stuff would cost if you're trying to buy it now. It's it's nutty, nuts. But uh, this is the material for the uh, fuel car that I didn't know um, he even had. Uh, you know, it's the wheels have to be machined um, and uh, so forth. But anyway, that. Uh, that is a savings right there. Uh, this is a hand pump for the tender. If you want to be able to manually pump water into the boiler, you can do that. This is all the material for the tender. Um, he, he machined one axle. There's two other axles that got to be turned. And uh, so that's got to be built. We've got a couple of... Uh, brass couplers which are kind of cool these are running boards that John did um, there I I don't know if he laser cut those or how but those are individual boards put in the running board which is just insane I don't know and and plates of brass for the the floor of the cab um, and these were kind of, well, well right here we got the, uh, there's super scale um, injectors. These are going to go on the side of the locomotive that will draw water from the tender into the boiler via steam. Um, and this, this was a bit of a surprise. I, first of all, I don't know what, what all this stuff is. There's no talent because, but these, these don't go with, with the 10 wheeler. I'm not really sure what, what they are. But I found out talking to Tim, these are um, these are uh, steam pumps that uh, pump pump water into into a boiler. And John bless his soul was just so so good about marking things. So long story short is there's two of them that work. One, which I think is this one, is a dummy. This one doesn't work, but all this, these are all pieces to either build or repair steam pumps. So I had no idea what these were, and uh, that turns out that's what they are. And Tim also told me that these are rather pricey if you go to purchase them, and they're snatched up very quickly. So we're going to uh, uh, figure something out with those. Get one, try to get one 
repaired, so that would be three. And uh, we'll see where that one leads. But that that was uh, that will add money to uh, help complete this project, especially since I got to put in a lot to my truck. And he's got all the the fittings to do the piping on the locomotive, nuts, bolts, screws, so forth. No valves, but man, pretty much everything else. Um, a box full of 100 million rivets for doing the tender. So that, uh, that is gonna be an interesting project. And then the last, not least, is just a box full of uh, truck springs. Way more than you'll ever need. So that's that's my that's my project, and like I said, I've got all the the drawings, which will help um, answer a lot of questions on on what to do. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty pretty excited. It, uh, it's it's going to be a fun ride. So what I'm going to do is as I get stuff done on it, I'll I'll do I'll do some updates. And uh, we'll, we'll do a series of that um, until it's done. So you guys come along for the ride. And uh, it won't be a lot. It won't be quick. But uh, as I get stuff done on it, I will uh, keep you guys in the loop. So uh, thanks for watching. And uh, we'll see where this one goes. Take care, everybody.